All right, so now in this video, we're going to look at uh, this circuit. I have an NPN bipolar junction transistor here, 2N2222, and with the help of a capacitor, by pressing the switch, the LED comes on, and then it fades off. The capacitor is ultimately what is getting the uh, LED to fade. So I can hold it as long as I want. It, the LED will stay on fully, but when I release the switch, now it fades off. So now, as in the other videos in this series of uh, transistor circuits I've been doing, I do a step-by-step -step build of the circuit. I think it helps make it easier to see what's going on. And so, I had the uh, transistor here, the 2N2222. It's an NPN type transistor on this side of the board. I think I'm going to move it over here so it's a little bit more like the schematic. It won't change the circuit at all, just the positioning. So it's a 2N2222. The numbers don't show up on camera though, usually. And the left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, right pin is the collector. That's with the flat side facing us. Any bipolar junction transistor that starts with 2N that I've come across has the same pin layout. So if I just slide it this way, now it matches the schematic. So emitter, on the bottom, base in the middle, and collector on top. So I'm going to put it here. I have a jumper for uh, spacing, and we'll put that there. So now the uh, the base connects to one side of the switch, and then also the negative side of the capacitor. We'll come to that. So again, I'm going to use this jumper, and it should already be spaced to where doesn't matter which side we put it on, let's put it on the back. But uh, the base should come to one side of the switch. There we go. And we see that we have that there. So, so middle pin is going to one side of the switch via this jumper. They're directly connected. So these switches, I really like these for the breadboard. These, these smaller ones, the, the pins are about spaced right when you get them and they insert pretty easy this particular board though kind of pushes them out but uh, no big deal this one's holding pretty steady right here so now we got uh, the switch and we'll come back to the capacitor let's finish with the transistor so we are connected to ground we have our base connected it's going to be that jumper and uh, now we want to put an LED to the collector up there and that's pretty straightforward it's going to be the cathode since we haven't trimmed this uh, LED the leads cathodes a short lead it's going to go to the collector the anodes going to go up one row pretty straightforward if this will go in there we go so we got that there. Now we'll do a 220 ohm resistor. This is about the minimum value resistor you want to use when, actually that's the wrong resistor, when you're using a 5 volt power supply. Especially if you're going to put it directly to the 5 volt power supply. Any higher value resistor will work. The LED will just be not as bright. And the transistor resistor will get less hot. That's about... Uh, the only difference, if you use a higher value resistor, if you use a more voltage, you have to use a higher value resistor. So, we got the load out of the way. So now, this is going to be a little more complicated. I have here the uh, push button switch. It's going to be parallel to a capacitor. So we're going to use a 47 microfarad capacitor. I just find it's a good value to use in this circuit. Exact value doesn't matter. Smaller value capacitor, if you keep this same value resistor, the fade will go faster. Higher value capacitor, the fade will go slower. That's about uh, the only difference. But I find this one works nicely, especially for uh, the video I'm putting together. So, this is parallel. This is an electrolytic capacitor. This side needs to be more negative, And that goes to one side of the switch. And then this side needs to be more positive. As you can see, there's a jumper that connects it to the other side of the switch. So we have them parallel there. I already have the uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor here. That goes 
where the uh, switch and the positive side of the capacitor come together and then it goes to the positive rail. So now we have, uh, let's turn the power on, we could just leave this circuit like this, let's zoom back a little bit, and uh, on the schematic there's one more resistor, we could just leave the circuit like this, power is on, but uh, now the LED is going out, and uh, let's turn the lights down. You can probably see that the LED is not going out completely, and that's because current can still get through the capacitor once it fully charges. There's a little bit of leakage, and normally that's no big deal, but of course it's going to a transistor, an amplifier. So it's taking whatever tiny bit of current, very little bit, and uh, letting a multiple amount probably about 300 times as much current from collector to emitter so a tiny bit of current is going through the LED and lighting it up so we can take a resistor here and pull down the voltage there so we will uh, do that right now and now I think the LED is just kinda yeah you can see it's not glowing this one just kind of reflects light coming onto it. So it kind of looks like it's glowing. Some of them do that more than others, but uh, when you put it in the shade, you can see it's, uh, it's not lit. So now it does the same thing, but it goes out completely. So as I said before, it wasn't lit very brightly, so you don't need this resistor. But uh, all it's doing is taking whatever trickle of current, I actually have it on that diagram there, that is getting through the capacitor and just bringing it to ground. But a higher amount of currents will just go past this resistor. It won't take much out of it. And another thing while well, we have the lights down low is, as I said before, this is an amplifier. And you can see just me touching the uh, capacitor here, even with this, it's a high value, 220 kilo ohm, exact value doesn't matter though, but you'll want a high value resistor here in the hundreds of kilo ohms. The, uh, even with the uh, pull down resistor, I can falsely trigger this a little bit. And so it's amplifying the signal my body's picking up and uh, transferring down towards ground. It may be a little worse without this, I'm not sure. But uh, in any case, be aware of that if you're working on it while well, the power is still applied and it starts lighting up when you touch something that's you picking up electromagnetic radiation in the air from the appliances and lights and stuff around you the wiring and you're transferring some of that energy to there it's not much but this is an amplifier so it's being amplified and moving along so I have current pads drawn on here and so you can see when I press the button so the transistor is on right now it's saturated we're given the base of the transistor enough current for it to turn on completely so let's follow the path from positive to negative that's what you think of when you think of conventional current the way they used to think electricity works now they know that electrons actually flow from negative to positive but when uh early electronics material was written they thought it went positive to negative and so that's how they trace the circuit ultimately it doesn't matter positive going that way is the same as negative going that way so I just thought I would briefly mention that a lot of people get upset when you talk about current flow and electron flow and uh, unfortunately we're stuck with two systems positive going to negative or negative going to positive but in any case let's get to it so I'm pressing the switch the uh, positive side of the power supply going through the resistor through the switch and then to the base of the transistor and then to ground we have a path there the base is more negative or uh, more positive than the emitter by at least 0.6 volts we get conduction so what that does it allows full conduction because we're getting enough current through uh, the base to emitter and the LED is fully lit and its brightness is based on the resistor. Now we let go of the switch. Actually the capacitor also discharges. It's discharged right now because 
we're directly connecting positive to negative so there's no voltage difference now we let it go it fades down so we have this diagram here so we open the switch there's no current path through there so the capacitor is charging and right when we let go of the switch we'll get this full current charging the capacitor but as the capacitor charges it will be going from zero volts across it up to one volt two volts three volts four volts whatever and at each volt that it gains that's less difference from the power supply voltage so it starts off at zero volts once it has one volt across it there's only four volts across the resistor once there's two volts across the capacitor then we only have three volts across the resistor and basic ohm's law tells you that the uh, current going through the resistor is based on its resistance and the voltage across it so as the voltage is going down across it you're getting less current and the capacitor is charging slower so you may notice that it's bright and uh, once it starts it looks like it's keeping the transistor saturated for a tiny bit but once it starts fading you notice it kind of fades uh, faster at first than towards the end and that's just because less currents getting through the resistor charging the capacitor slower and current ultimately can't go through a capacitor as uh, we can see here we got positive coming in and then ultimately positive going out this is becoming more negative and uh, finally it equalizes and we get uh, the power source voltage across the capacitor and it can't do anything and to do anything we need to close the switch to give it a path to discharge so ultimately currents not actually flowing through it it is uh, basically for a tiny bit but then it can't go any further it equalizes and then it has to go in the opposite direction so whatever goes in has to come out so it doesn't really go through it and uh, commonly you'll hear that capacitors block direct current and uh, as I said they let it flow for a tiny bit but then finally they stop it but you can alternate so you can have positive coming in and then positive coming out over and over again that's uh, passing alternating current